Brigadier General Richard Henry Pratt was effective at getting students to join social clubs, marching bands, and sports. He brought in teachers from the Ivy League colleges, and in 1882, football arrived at Carlisle, but was banned by 1890 after several players were seriously injured. When a dozen boys eloquently pleaded with Pratt to reform the team in 1891, he had a few conditions. First, never slug. Onlookers will say, see, they're savages and you can't get it out of them. The second, they had to beat the best teams in the country. 1899 brought Glenn Pop Warner to coach Carlisle and the game changed. Pop quickly realized that the undersized Carlisle team was never going to win against the top teams without towing a fine line between innovation and cheating. He began to create trick plays using the Indians' speed and agility to confound the opposition. He invented the single wing formation, famous for its power on the strong side. He sewed football patches on the front of the jerseys to confuse his opponents. He devised the hidden ball trick where the ball was tucked into the player's sweater. When defenses caught up with a single wing, he created the double wing formation from which he ran reverses and fakes. Were these plays legal? There was nothing in the rule book against it, but each time he developed a football innovation, there would be a rule made the following year. And so the rule book of modern American football began. Carlisle became a contender, and Pop Warner became a legend. In 1906, when passing was legalized, Warner went to work developing what would become the forward spiral pass, which Carlisle utilized in 1907 against the University of Pennsylvania. All-American Albert Exendine made a 40-yard catch from fullback Pete Hauser in front of 20,000 spectators. American football would never be the same. In 1912, Carlisle had become a force to be reckoned with. That season, they led the nation in total offense, yards, touchdowns, and points, with Captain Jim Thorpe leading the 12 man team that included future Hall of Famers Joe Guyon and Gus Welch. The Carlisle Indians marched into West Point decimated the Army team, in whose backfield were four future World War II generals, including Dwight D. Eisenhower. The score was 27-6. The Carlisle Indian School Project is a campaign to create the Carlisle Indian School Heritage Center, a museum and memorial to the students of Carlisle and their legacy. Our mission is to authentically tell the story give voice to more than 10,000 children who attended Carlisle Industrial School and create a place for all people to learn the country's boarding school era through the creation of a heritage center. You can be a part of preserving this history and honoring the students by donating